anxiety about the unknown. I could hear the steps. He had all black the eyes. There was no all of a sudden, this huge object with lights was on top of him. No sound. The fear. Yes, this happened. It was a super loud noise followed by the noise of breaking glass. It really was a noise that made my legs shake because of how it was It was heard. You knew, you knew something had broken and you knew it was something very big. So we yelled at the lady that helped us um, what had happened, if everything was fine, if she was fine. And she couldn't answer us. So we went downstairs to see what was happening and we saw a very large piece of furniture that was in the kitchen and it came down on the high chair and fell exactly in the place where my baby had been just minutes ago. Welcome to another episode of Yes, This Happened, the podcast that brings you weekly testimonials of paranormal and horror experiences from real people like you. This week, we have Daniela, a Mexican mother and wife who will share a terrifying story related to the phenomenon of poltergeist, in which physical objects are moved by spirits. This happened about six years ago in Puebla. Uh, when my daughters were little, we needed to make an extension to the house to have a little more space and be more comfortable. So we decided to move to another place because we were building an extra floor and we had to take the walls down and there was, there was going to be a lot of dust. So we wanted to avoid this dusty situation for our daughters. So we decided to just to rent a house temporarily. While we were at that house, some strange things began to happen to us. And some of them were, for example, uh, that once I was, I was already super tired because I had two babies who were very young and just about a year apart. So I hardly slept at night. And although I didn't used to do it, once I left my younger daughter downstairs with the person who was helping me at the moment, and I said, Can you please take care of her for a while? I'm going to sleep for a while so I can rest and I'll be down in a little bit. And, and that's it. She said, that's okay, I'll take care of her. After a while, my husband came back from running about 10 minutes after and I had just left the baby downstairs. It was 10 or 15 minutes. And my husband sees the baby in the kitchen in her high chair with the lady who helps me. And my husband takes her from the high chair and takes her up to my room and leaves her there next to me in the bed. And I was... I kind of said, like, I'm not going to be able to sleep anymore because he already left her there, but I thought, okay, whatever. I just kept thinking, I'm not going to be able to sleep anymore. So I'm just going to get up and see the baby and all that, and I was still kind of mad, just thinking, yeah, I never rest or go to sleep. Why does he bring her up and leave her here on the bed with me if I just wanted to rest for a little while? And just then, just when I was thinking all this, we heard a frightful bang. It was a super loud noise followed by the noise of breaking glass. It was, it really was a noise that made my legs shake because of how it was, it was heard. You knew, you knew something had broken and you knew it was something very big. So we yelled at the lady that helped us um, what had happened, if everything was fine, if she was fine and she couldn't answer us. So we went downstairs to see what was happening My husband ran downstairs and I went down behind him and we saw a very large piece of furniture that was in the kitchen that was built very well. It was mounted on the wall and had been there for a long time. There were two of the same and one was still perfectly mounted and the other one fell entirely to the floor but it completely detached from the walls with pegs with everything. And it came down on the high chair and fell exactly in the place where my baby had been just minutes ago. Before my husband picked her up and brought her upstairs. There is nothing more terrifying than having the feeling that your children are in danger. For Daniela and her husband, this concern became a reality when they realized that only a few minutes separated them from a tragedy with their baby. But they were not the only ones who were frightened and this would not be the last paranormal event. The lady who helped us was very, very scared just standing on a corner, and thank God nothing happened to her. But that piece of furniture was right in the place where my baby was sitting three minutes before that, you know, that piece of furniture fell down. Another strange thing that happened to us is that once my baby, 
the other baby who was two or three years old at the time, uh, she told me, hey, mom, dad is here, and he didn't say hi to me. And I told her, no, baby, your dad hasn't gotten home. He's still at work. And she tells me, yes, my dad is home. He got home and went upstairs. I saw a man going upstairs. And at that moment, there was only me with the two babies in the house. And the lady who helped me was downstairs in the laundry room, which wasn't near the stairs. After that, we began to think that there was a strange presence. You had a feeling of being watched, or suddenly you felt that someone was behind you. But you turned around and there was no one. The older baby slept alone in her room, in her crib. I would leave her there, and if you closed the door, she would fall asleep perfectly. And she began to stop sleeping, and one night, we left her in the crib, and she began to scream, to stand up, and we could see in the monitor that she grabbed the crib rails, and she began to move them desperately, as if saying, get me out of here. So we went to get her really quickly, and we began to put her to sleep in our bed every night to calm her down, and so on. On another occasion, I remember that she stared at the window and said to me, Mommy, Mommy, what's at the window? Mommy, what's there in the window? And I turned around and told her, there's nothing, Chula. And she told me, yes, Mom, there's something. And I said, no, 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 don't worry, there's nothing. You must have seen a shadow or something. Nothing's wrong. The paranormal entity that has been causing events in Daniela's and her family's house has begun to affect each member of the family. The events have become more frequent and personal, putting the safety of their daughters at risk. The concern has reached its peak, and it's necessary to take measures to get rid of this entity that has caused so much discomfort in their home. Yes, this happened. happened. When Daniela and her family temporarily move to a rented house while they're remodeling their own, they are affected by extreme paranormal manifestations. Even the well-being of their daughters has been put at risk. However, the entity that causes these events not only affects physical objects, but also starts to affect Daniela and her husband, and even visits them. Before all this, I didn't believe in any of these paranormal things. But so many things happened in that house that I began to believe that there is something other than us. Then my younger baby would get up at dawn to drink her milk like all babies. And one night around three in the morning, more or less, she woke up and I had a mirror that I had taken to that rental house because of their remodeling and I had placed it just against the wall next to a cabinet, so when they finished our remodeling, we would take it back and reinstall it. I was afraid the workers would break it, so I had it next to my bed, uh, between a dresser and the wall with a piece sticking out, and one night, uh, the baby began to cry because she was thirsty. Well, she was hungry. So she cried, and I picked her up, and I took her to the bed, like always, to give her milk. And when I was giving her the milk, I felt something and turned to the mirror and saw a man standing in the middle of the bed between my husband and me. It was a shadow, but it was very clear in the mirror. So I turned around immediately and there was nothing. I felt a chill all over. I put the baby on the bed. I continued giving her milk. I waited for her to fall asleep as quickly as possible and I tried to just cover myself as much as possible and just try to, to fall asleep. After that, we continued to feel very strange things, seeing very strange things. Suddenly we saw shadows. It was no longer just me and the baby. My husband also saw and felt it. My husband and I started having many fights. Normally we never fight and we had fights very often. It was a super hostile environment, super weird. You didn't feel comfortable in that house. You couldn't be calm. Then one day, my husband and I 
talked and I told them I want to leave this house. If they haven't finished our remodeling, it doesn't matter, but I can't stay here anymore. So we both decided, because of how we failed and everything, to go back to our house, which only had some details to be finished. But we could move back there, so we moved back to our house. And strange things continue to happen in our house. So I was already very desperate because one of the things that happened in our house when we moved back was that a lamp that we had on the first floor in which no remodeling was done and that had been there for a long time. Um, when my babies were playing on the mat in that room, we went to get them and I carried one of the babies in my arms and the other one just followed us. And at that moment, the lamp falls on the carpet and completely shatters. So at that point, I'm already desperate and scared. So I spoke with a friend. I told her what was happening and she told me, you have to take someone to clean the house. Apparently, the spirit that was tormenting the family has attached itself to Daniela and followed them to their home. An unacceptable situation that requires extreme measures that they are willing to take. A lady came with some herbs, some sticks, I don't know what it was, and, and a frying pan. So she lit those herbs in that frying pan and then passed it around the house and she told us, it's important that the girls are not here. We're going to do this cleansing. I was so desperate that I said, okay, let's just do it. And the lady passed that frying pan everywhere in the house. And uh, when she finished cleaning, she told us, uh, indeed, that there was a man in this house. You know, there's a man in this house who followed you because she explained to me that I was a person with a lot of light and that then, like, this person had gotten hooked and that he was a person from the countryside uh, from a long time ago where they had built uh, that house, etc. cetera. Uh, then um, she kept doing her thing and at one point, she showed me the frying pan and said, look, yeah, here he is. And I don't know if it's your imagination or because they tell you or that you're already predisposed to stuff or what, but indeed, you could see a perfect face of a person in that frying pan. I don't know if it was a coincidence. I don't know what it was. But from that moment on, strange things stopped happening to us and everything returned to normal. The girls were much calmer. I never felt that way again. And everything began to be much better in the house between us, between my husband and me. Uh, things were already much better. Everything had returned to normal. And one day I met for breakfast with a neighbor from the community where we had rented the house. Uh, she invited me to breakfast. She introduced me to some of her friends and one of them had actually lived in that rental house before us. And she told me, look, she's my friend and she lived in the same house where you lived. And we became friends and all that. And she kept telling me. In fact, she once gave us a very big scare. A very big scare. And I'm like, oh, really? And she said, and the friend said, yes, I'm alive thanks to Maria and her children. Daniela is about to discover that the cause of so many fears and insecurities has not only affected her. The malicious entity that inhabits that rental house also put the physical integrity of the people who previously lived there at risk. Um, because I had a very bad accident in that house. And I was like, oh, really? Tell me. And she tells me the story. You know, what happened is that once I was going down the stairs and I fell from the first step to the last one, from the second floor to the first floor, just tumbling down, I split my head open and I couldn't react. There was a pool of blood, so Maria's children came over to look for my son at that time, at that moment, uh, who wasn't home, and they saw me through the window and were able to come into the house, got me up and called the ambulance, and I went to the hospital, and I said, oh, okay. Um, and, and I asked her, hey, don't you feel like strange things were happening in the house? And she told me, I had the opportunity to meet the person who lived there before me. 
and she had all sorts of misfortunes that broke in and stole all their belongings and they felt the same energy that this lady I had just met and I had felt in that house. Uh, those people who were there before her and me and she tells me, I don't know what's there, but the only thing I know is that they don't like the house to be occupied. It is unusual for one or more spirits to attack and endanger human life. Generally, what an appearance or a paranormal experience causes is fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of inexplicable sounds. But Daniela's case is particularly interesting because on several occasions, her young daughters narrowly escaped extreme physical harm by just a few minutes. It is important to mention that these events became more frequent and more personal, affecting not only the objects in their home, but also themselves and their daily lives. Daniela's experience stays with us as proof of paranormal events that transcended their dimension to find us in ours. What do you think? <laughs>